good morning students today in this video we'll we'll uh, summarize our second chapter which is a poem the coromandel fishers <clears throat> it's a poem by sarojini naidu all of us know about her right all of us know about her uh, we may not know that she was a writer she was a poet but all of us uh, know that she was a freedom fighter she was a big part of indian national congress and uh, she uh, like uh, fought for india's freedom along with uh, uh, gandhi ji nehru ji and all the other great uh, freedom fighters of india so uh, talking about Sar sarojini naidu uh, students uh, sarojini naidu was uh, actually a writer first and uh, she uh, joined the uh, freedom struggle of india later on she started writing at the age of 12 at at a very young age she st started writing and uh, she had written a few plays as well uh, as a as a child and uh, one of her plays which she wrote at a very young age it was liked a lot by nizam of hyderabad and uh, he like uh, promoted her her studies as well he helped her he was very fond of sarojini naidu uh, so later uh, like uh, though she has written a, a few plays and later on she wrote a few speeches as well but she is known for her poetry she is known for her poetry she is very famous her uh, poetry is are very famous she was so good at it that uh, later on um, uh, pandit nehru gave her the title bharat kokila uh, nightingale of india uh, she was very famous so uh, don't confuse that she was a singer okay she was not a singer uh, we also call uh, lata mangeshkar as nightingale of india right uh, so she is nightingale lata mangeshkar ji was a nightingale because of her singing skills sarojini naidu was a nightingale because of her poetry uh, why why a poet is called a nightingale because uh, the uh, like poetry that she, uh, she used to write, so I do the poetry that she used to write. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was like put under the category of lyric poetry. Lyric poetry. There is something called lyric poetry. Now, what is this lyric poetry? Lyric poetry is written in such a way that we can uh, make a sound uh, like a, a song out of it. Song out of it, we can sing uh, this kind of poetry. Uh, the like uh, rhyming scheme, uh, the scale. Uh, is such that we can actually convert these uh, poetries, these poems into songs as well. Uh, and uh, Sarojini Naidu was an expert in writing lyric poetry, and that is why she was called uh, Bharat Kokila or uh, Nightingale uh, of India. Uh, Sarojini Naidu uh, has written like number of uh, uh, po poems, and uh, two of her books, two of her books, The Golden Threshold. Uh, this was one of her famous books, which was published uh, at a very young age when she was quite young. Uh, the golden threshold and one of her other books was the bird of time the word of time these are two of her most famous books uh, which were published when she was quite young and later on uh, she started uh, writing individual poems individual like uh, single poems which she, uh, were published in uh, different newspapers and uh, later uh, these poems were uh, published as a collection so there are two famous collections uh, because later on when she joined the Indian freedom struggle, she was uh, not uh, uh, like getting so much time to uh, write a book and uh, like publish it. So she used to write uh, poetry sometimes. And uh, so two of her collections, the uh, Sceptered Flute, the Sceptered Flute and uh, the Feather of the Dawn. These are two of her uh, collections which were published later on. Uh, these are like collection of her uh, single or individual poetries. Sarojini Naidu. Uh, who was a great part of Indian National Congress. She actually was made the President of Indian National Congress as well once. Once she was made President of Indian National Congress. And uh, she was a big part of uh, our freedom struggle. We know uh, about her. We have all, all read her, right, read about her so many times in our history books, right? After independence, after independence, she was uh, like made uh, the Governor of Uttar Pradesh as well. She was made Governor of Uttar Pradesh as well. Uh, she was the first Governor of UP uh, after independence. So this was about her political career. So students, we will uh, read about, uh, like we will read this po poem. It's a beautiful poem. The name, the Coromandel Fishers. The name of the poem is the Coromandel uh, Fishers. What is this Coromandel? You may have uh, read this word in your uh, geography book. Coromandel, uh, Coromandel uh, coastal area of South India, right? Coromandel uh, Fishers. So this uh, name Coromandel, uh, if you had, uh, if you have read about uh, the coastal plains of India. Uh, like uh, in the on the western uh, sides of India, we have got uh, what uh, western plains, uh, Konkan plains, Kannad plains, and Malabar uh, plains. In the same way, uh, on the eastern side, on the eastern side, like like this is if this is India's map, roughly uh, this side, uh, the, these coasts, these coasts are known as Coromandel plains. Okay, so uh, these uh, fishermen who live near the Coromandel coast, uh, they are referred to as Coromandel fishers or Coromandel fishermen, right? 
so this poem is about uh, fishers or fishermen who live near the coromandel coast of uh, india fine so we will we'll read through the poem students <coughs> first uh, stanza rise brothers rise the wakening skies pray to the morning light the wind lies asleep in the arms of the dawn like a child that has cried all night come let us gather our nets from the shore and set our catamarans free to capture the leaping wealth of the tide for we are the kings of the sea so students in this poem uh, the speaker is uh, kind of uh, uh, motivating the fishermen to like uh, get up to wake up and uh, go on their uh, daily uh, task do daily job which is catching fishes right so uh, in this poem uh, let's go stanza wise so in the in the first line rise brothers rise the wakening skies pray to the morning light it's morning time now it's morning time now and uh, sun has appeared uh, it's uh, daylight daylight has uh, like uh, uh, appeared we, we have got light now like uh, for the entire night uh, we had darkness we had darkness now morning has come and we have light uh, and uh, it appears as if the skies as if the skies are praying to the morning light to the sunlight so in the morning time students if you look at the sky the sky looks so beautiful right the sky looks so beautiful uh, and uh, the light is not uh, uh, too loud it is not too harsh the light uh, is very soft in the morning time and it appears that everyone is respecting the light uh, including the skies so everyone is praying uh, so in this first line the poet the poet or the speaker is saying uh, or uh, calling on our fishermen of coromandel that they should wake up they should wake up they should rise why because it's morning time now the like sun is out uh, the the light is there everyone is uh, like praying the light everyone is thanking that uh, the, the light has come finally after a long dark night right so rise brothers rise the wakening skies pray to the morning light the skies which were sleep sleeping the skies which were sleeping throughout the night they are waking up now and they are praying uh, the morning light uh, and you should also wake up you should also wake up like the uh, skies and you should also uh, get ready in the second line the wind lies asleep in the arms of the dawn like a child that has cried all nights students in this uh, second line the poet says that uh, throughout the night throughout the night the wind was uh, blowing uh, very uh, like uh, very harshly the wind wind was blowing very harshly uh, it was it was uh, creating uh, havoc it was creating uh, chaos uh, all through the night uh, the wind was blowing so uh, like loudly so harshly so strongly the wind was blowing blowing so strongly all through the night but now in the morning time the wind is still now the wind is not blowing the wind is still so the poet has compared the wind with a child so assume there was a child which was crying all night there was a child which was crying all night and it was crying aloud it was not letting its mother sleep it 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 uh, like uh, disturbed uh, his uh, mother all night he cried all night and now when the morning has come now when her his mother has to like get up and uh, go on with her daily uh, chores now this child has slept now this child is uh, uh, like uh, uh, tired of crying this child was crying throughout the night and he is tired now and he is sleeping now he is sleeping now peacefully in the same way in the same way the wind was blowing so strongly all through the night but now the wind is still and uh, it appears as if it is sleeping it is it is sleeping in the arms of its mother and the poet has compared dawn dawn with uh, like the mother of the uh, wind so the wind is sleeping in uh, the arms of the dawn means uh, like uh, the wind is still and uh, the wind is not blowing and uh, this is this is personification students uh, uh, wind does not uh, like cry wind does not sleep uh, uh, so this is personification a uh, wind has been comp uh, like uh, uh, con compared with a child it it is it is being considered as a child and the dawn has been considered as the mother the do the dawn the morning time what is dawn bachcho dawn and dusk right d d a w n dawn uh, d a w n dawn uh, this is the like Uh, early morning early morning uh, there is like a small period of time when the, the light is very low like the sun is not uh, up on the sky up in the sky like uh, and the sunlight is not too loud uh, there is like dim light uh, and that uh, period of time is known as dawn and dusk is in the evening when the sun is setting the, the when the sun is about to set it's not completely dark yet but it's not broad daylight anymore that time of the day is known as dusk so Uh, the like uh, dawn is compared as the mother of the child so once again bachcho the wind lies asleep 
in the arms of the dawn like a child that has cried all night right the wind is still now the wind is not blowing the wind is uh, silent the wind is still and it appears as if it is sleeping and where it is sleeping it is sleeping in its mother's arm and who is uh, wind's mother the dawn the dawn is the mother, uh, the mother of uh, the wind and uh, like the child was crying all night and now it is sleeping so in the same way the wind was uh, blowing strongly all night and now it is still fine third line come let us gather our nets from the shore and set our catamarans free students the poet or the speaker is uh, calling upon the fisherman uh, she says or the speaker says that we should gather our nets fishermen use these nets to catch uh, fishes right they use nets to catch fishes uh, fishes uh, i should say fish because uh, the plural of fish is fish right f a i s h fish plural what is its plural it is also fish there is no e s theek hai fish ka plural fish hota hai right the plural of fish is fish so uh, the like uh, uh, what uh, the speaker is calling upon the fisherman uh yeah the, she is she is saying that we should uh, like uh, gather our nets we should collect our nets and we should set our catamarans free what is this catamaran students catamaran is a type of boat catamaran is a type of boat uh, it's a small boat catamaran is a small boat uh, normally uh, students my drawing and my handwriting are too poor huh but catamaran is a small boat uh, which has got two which has got two small planks so the like uh, quality of uh, catamaran is that it is set on two planks so imagine uh, there are two wooden planks okay there are two wooden planks and on these two wooden planks a boat is uh, like uh, set a boat is set uh, so uh, because of these two uh, wooden planks this boat is known as catamaran so imagine there is a boat there is a boat and uh, this boat uh, this boat students uh, please forgive me for my drawing so there are two wooden planks at the bottom and on those two wooden planks the entire boat is set it's a small boat which fishermen use it's known as catamaran okay catamaran nowadays there are some steamers uh, which are like uh, very uh, rich looking very posh looking but they are also uh, set on to two planks at the bottom not wooden but plastic and those are also known as catamarans uh, you can google uh, the images the pictures of catamarans so catamarans are basically small boats fine so uh, she is saying uh, my dear fresh, uh, fisherman my brothers wake up uh, get up and uh, collect your nets uh, set your boats free set your boats free let's go on a sail let's go on a sail this is what she is calling upon last line to capture the leaping wealth of the tide to capture the leaping wealth of the tide for we are the kings of the sea students to capture the leaping wealth of the tide tides what are tides students tides are two strong uh, waves Uh, so this is a part of geography students in uh, seas in oceans we get uh, to see waves right water waves uh, every day two times in a day there are two strong waves very like large waves very strong waves and those are caused by the gravitational force of the moon so we will not go into the sciences and the geography of tides but tides are big waves big waves large waves uh, so these waves are uh, carrying wealth what is the wealth the wealth of the um, uh, sea is fish fish is the wealth this is the wealth after which the fishermen are right so the speaker says that uh, we have to set our uh, boats free why to capture the leaping wealth of the tide leaping what is leaping leap is uh, to jump leap l e a p leap right leap means jump so the tides are strong waves big waves and they are like moving the wealth is also moving the wealth is like leaping kind of jumping right from one place to another the fishes are jumping with the waves so we have to capture this leaping wealth of the sea this leaping this moving wealth of the sea the fish we have to capture and to capture them let's go let's go uh, and why should we go because we are the kings of the sea we fishermen are the kings of the sea and what kings have kings have got wealth right kings are very wealthy have you seen a poor king anyone no kings have got like treasuries they have got treasuries full of golds and diamonds they are th- they are so rich right they control the entire wealth of the uh, like kingdom or uh, empire so we are the kings the fishermen are the kings of the sea we should uh, go uh, like uh, uh, we should sail in the sea and we should we should capture the wealth of the sea because we are the kings and that belongs to us that belongs to us we should get it we should get hold of it it is uh, uh, it is our wealth the fish is our wealth so students this was the first paragraph in which uh, basically the author is author is calling upon the fisherman to 
wake up and get going to capture fish to to like catch fish right we'll go to the second paragraph students no longer delay let us hasten away in the track of the sea gulls call the sea is our mother the cloud is our brother the waves are our comrades all what though we toss at the fall of the sun where the hand of the sea god drives he who holds the storm by the hair will hide in the breast of our lives right so in the second paragraph students the speaker says we should not delay any further no longer delay let us hasten away in the track of the seagull's call the speaker says we should not delay any longer let's hurry up hasten what what does hasten means students hasten means hurry up hasten means hurry up right hurry up so uh, the speaker says no longer delay let us hasten away in the track of the seagull's call we should not delay we should hurry up in the track of the seagull's call what is seagull students seagull is a type of bird seagull seagull is a type of bird it is a white bird which lives uh, uh, like on the shores it's a white bird which lives on the shores so uh, we should like uh, follow seagulls uh, like uh, during the day time seagulls normally uh, fly uh, deep into the sea like obviously uh, not into the sea but they are like up on the sky but they are not near the shore they are like uh, uh, flying uh, towards the uh, like uh, deep seas but on in, in the sky not in the, inside the water so we should follow these seagulls we should follow these seagulls seagulls are flying from the shore towards the deep of the sea we should also do that we should follow their track and we should keep going deeper and deeper inside like uh, uh, deeper and deeper uh, in the sea on the sea right uh, no longer delay let us hasten away in the track of the seagull's call the sea is our mother the cloud is our brother the waves are our comrades all students the poet says that the sea is our mother so the poet is kind of trying to establish a relationship the poet is trying to make fishermen feel comfortable and homely that we are not going uh, away from our homes or our families the sea the sea is kind of our family because uh, sea is our mother the sea is our mother so we are not going away from our family we are like uh, uh, we are going to be with our mother so how uh, uh, can we be far away from our family if we are with our mother right so uh, the poet is comparing the sea with the like with the mother of the fisherman and the clouds as brothers the clouds uh, up in the sky are our brothers so we don't have to worry we will be in the company of our family members right sea is our mother uh, the clouds are our brothers the waves are our comrades all the sea waves the sea waves are our comrades what is comrades comrade is friend companion friend friend or companion so see uh, like comrades uh, the the waves will be our friends or companions right what though we toss at the fall of the sun when the hand of the sea god drives students what if we fall down what is toss uh, we have seen this toss happening during before a cricket match right toss toss also means uh, falling like i tossed and fell down i i like uh, tumbled uh, with uh, like on something over something and i fall down so tossing also means falling tossing also means falling so what if we uh, toss like tumble and fall huh? tossing is basically not falling but tumbling huh? like you uh, tumble over something like there was a rock or there was a stone on the road and you like uh, stumbled right you know and that is that, that is tossing so what if we toss at uh, uh, and fall yeah at the fall of the sun students let's understand this line in a simple way we are going deep in the sea what if we fell down what if our boat sinks what if we uh, like fall in the sea huh? there is a danger there is a risk of drowning uh, like by the time the sun sets by the time the sun sets by the time it is evening by the time we are about to come back by the time if we fell into the sea what if our uh, boat tossed what if our boat tossed and we fell into the sea and what if we are drowning what will happen right because uh, like the sea god the hand of sea god drives means see uh, the sea god may like uh, 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 like produce some uh, wind and like uh, some storm may come our boat may uh, tremble like this you know our boat may tremble and we may fall down our boat boat may toss so what will happen then because sea god sea god controls all these things sea god like may cause a storm sea god may cause a storm and we may fell into the sea we may drown what if that happens 
what if we fell down and what if we drown fine we'll read the line again what though we toss at the fall of the sun where the hand of the sea god drives so in simple english what if by the time the sun sets and we are about to come back what if we toss and fell down what if we uh, stumble and fell down uh, what if what if the sea what if the sea god like uh, uh, makes us what if the sea god makes us uh, fell into the sea what will happen then in the last line is the answer the answer is he who holds the storm by the hair will hide in his breast our lives the sea god the sea god is very powerful the sea po god god is very powerful in the sea he is the ultimate power he is so strong he is so powerful he controls the storm he controls the storm in the in the like last line it says he who holds the storm by the hair now again the storm is compared with a person with a human being uh, again we see an example of personification so uh, like uh, the poet is saying that the sea god is so powerful that sea god holds the storm by the hair the sea god holds the storm by the hair it controls the storm if the sea god wants the storm will be there if the sea god wants there will be no storm uh, who controls the storm the sea god so if the sea god is so powerful that it can control the storm it can like hold the storm by its hair the sea god will also protect us the sea god will also protect us the sea god the sea god will will hold us close to his heart he will uh, uh, hold us close to his heart or uh, his breast the word breast is used here what is breast students uh, breast is uh, our uh, chest uh, this this uh, uh, like uh, 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 breast uh, breast and chest are synonymous uh, breast is like uh, uh, the portion above our heart where we hold someone close Uh, to us like if we have to hug someone uh, if we like if if a mother is holding a child uh, she is actually uh, uh, like holding or pressing the child to its uh, to her breast right uh, breast so students uh, like the sea god will hold us uh, close to uh, his heart or his breast and he will protect us so don't worry don't worry about falling and drowning in the sea uh, we should not worry about that because the sea god is uh, very powerful he is the supreme power he is, he he has got the ultimate power in the sea uh, in the sea there is no one more powerful than him he is the god he is the sea god he controls everything including the storm he controls the storm so if he can control the storm he can also protect us he will save us don't worry he will save us he will make sure that we come back safe and sound the sea god will make sure that we the fishermen return safely fine so we'll move to the last paragraph sweet is the shade of the coconut glade and the scent of the mango grove and sweet are the sands of the full of the moon with the sound of the voices we love but sweeter o oh brothers the kiss of the spray and the dance of the wild foam's glee row brothers row to the edge of the verge where the low sky mates with the sea students in the last line the poet says sweet is the shade of the coconut glade in the last line there are in the last stanza there are two things one first thing is that the poet is praising the beauties of the nature the beauties which we see at uh, the shores like uh, on any sea, uh, seashore we get to see we get to experience a few things which are too good to miss uh, they are like very enjoyable they are like some natural things which uh, everyone enjoy, likes to feel likes to experience likes to enjoy what are these things the first thing is the shade of the coconut glade students the spelling of coconut here in this paragraph is a variation of the spelling that we know we know the spelling as coconut c o c o right c o c o n u t coconut is the normal general spelling that we use these days the spelling in the book c o c o a n u t this is a variant this is a variant spelling this is a like a variation uh, that is also acceptable uh, but these days the common spelling is this one coconut right uh, but that is that word does not mean anything else that word only refers to this word coconut fine that is only a different spelling of the same word sweet is the shade of the coconut glade students what is shade shade is uh, like uh, shade Uh, there is sun there is sunlight and there is shade right 
uh, we we sit in the shade of the uh, what uh, tree so uh, du during summer time when we are out somewhere and uh, it's very hot what we do we sit in the shade of uh, what of uh, of a tree right and uh, students what is uh, glade glade is an open uh, space uh, in a wood or a forest glade is a open space in a wood or a forest so on the seashore we get to see vast open spaces right on the seashore we get to see large open spaces there are no houses no one builds houses near the shore because uh, uh, when the tides come or um, like a tsunami also may come and it will be very dangerous so there is a there is a instruction by the government that no one should build houses very close to the uh, sea or ocean uh, we have to like uh, uh, keep a safe uh, distance like um, around 1 km or so i don't know but there is a distance uh, only after which you can make any like uh, building or a house any property uh, on on the shore so normally on the shores we have got vast we have large open areas and in these open areas we have got uh, coconut trees and these coconut trees are uh, like uh, they, they grow they, these coconut trees grow at uh, like uh, big distances like long distances so we don't see like groups of coconut trees it's not like a dense forest it's not like a dense forest that so many coconut trees everywhere we can't even walk because there are so many coconut trees no it's not like that coconut trees are like uh, they grow at 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 distances at uh, long distances there is one coconut tree here and then the other one will be uh, quite far so in large open areas uh, and if the sun is uh, like uh, at the top uh, when it is noon time when the, it is too hot and if you are on the beach and when you find a coconut tree and when you are sitting besides uh, sitting beneath that coconut tree sitting under that coconut tree not beneath uh, what happens you you feel the shade and you like that shade so in open vast areas when you find a coconut tree you enjoy its shade you enjoy its shade right sweet is the shade of the coconut glade it's very sweet the shade of the coconut uh, uh, tree uh, in in a in a large you know open area is very sweet it's very enjoyable and the scent of the mango grove and also if we move a little further uh, uh, from the like seashore if we move a little farther a little farther from the uh, seashore uh, what happens we get to see uh, like mango grove bachcho there are two words farther and further uh, farther and further though both these words mean uh, similar things and they are many a times used uh, interchangeably but farther has a sense of distance farther i went uh, no farther farther means i stopped there i did not travel any more but i did not uh, uh, say anything further i did i did not say anything further so after that i did not say anything so this further can be used for both the things when you are saying something when you are doing something and you did not do anything after that or when you are walking or, or traveling then also you can use use further but farther is used only for the distance thing for the like uh, i was going to varanasi and uh, uh, there was a tree uh, fallen on the uh, road and uh, we uh, uh, turned and uh, came back to allahabad we did not go any farther right so we can say any further or any farther both in this case when you are going to varanasi but when you are speaking i did not say anything any further you we can only use the word further not the farther word okay farther is used only with distances only with uh, distances so uh, what else what i was saying yeah when you uh, like uh, move a little farther from the sea shore uh, towards the like uh, uh, land not the sea Uh, you get to see mango trees there are mango groves what are what is a grove students grove is a garden grove is a, a group of trees basically so like i have a guava grove on in uh, like uh, in my backyard oh, oh, yeah i should say on my backyard uh, students grove grove is a group of trees group of trees uh, garden is not the right word but you can say garden as well huh? bagicha aam ka bagicha uh, amrood ka bagicha uh, grove grove is a place where there are number of trees uh, like mostly of the same time same type grove uh, like a uh, number of trees number of trees tree, uh, trees of the same type grove and the scent of the mango grove we enjoy the scent of the mango grove if there is a mango grove if there is a like piece of land where number of mango trees are planted and uh, these plants these trees produce a sweet uh, smell sweet scent and we enjoy that right we also enjoy that on the seashore we do enjoy that on the seashore and sweet are the sands at the full of the moon with the sound of the voices we love also during night time 
on the uh, shores on the sea shore uh, like uh, when there is a full moon or uh, during the full moon nights when there is full moon the sand particles shine the sand particles shine so uh, strongly so strongly so vividly so clearly this shine so clearly and uh, like uh, it is uh, this this uh, scene is so enjoyable it it gives us such pleasure that we will not uh, like to miss it like on a full moon night on the sea shore when uh, everything is shining the sand particles are shining because of the uh, light uh, uh, thrown by the moon right and also we are able to hear the voices the sounds of the waves it is such a enjoyable uh, like moment full moon night sand, uh, sand particles uh, shining the sound of the uh, sea waves this is uh, like a beautiful moment to enjoy you can sit there for hours and uh, relax and uh, like experience this beautiful uh, like uh, opportunity given by the nature to uh, to, uh, to to us human beings right this is enjoyable so students all these things are enjoyable however in the next line the poet says however but sweeter oh brothers the kiss of the spray and the dance of the wild foams glee row brothers row uh, to the edge of the verge where the low sky mates with the sea uh, brothers fishermen though all these things on the shore are very enjoyable but more enjoyable is our journey our our uh, like uh, uh challenge that we take uh, in the sea we sail in the sea we uh, go and we catch fish and uh, uh, the, sometimes the wind blows sometimes uh, there are some uh, light storms as well and uh, the waves the waves hit our boats and uh, there are what there is water like sprinkling on our bodies so when you are in the sea uh, there there will always be water like uh, uh, falling on your body and you will not care about it like if you are, if you are sitting in a room here if i uh, like sprinkle a few drops of water on your face you'll be like uh, alarmed but when you are uh, in the sea uh, you understand that you are surrounded by water uh, like uh, from all sides and water droplets will keep falling on you right and you will not uh, mind it you will in fact enjoy it so imagine imagine a fisherman is sailing fast on a boat so imagine i am a fisherman i am sailing fast on a boat my hair uh, is like uh, uh, blowing uh, uh, or i should say yeah blowing backward or flowing backward uh, right blowing backward i should say not flowing uh, my hair is uh, blowing backward and i'm sailing and it's such a enjoyable experience and water droplets are falling on me and i'm loving it i'm loving it i'm in the sea i'm sailing at a high speed water droplets are falling on me my hair is blowing and i'm loving it right so this experience is far better than the experiences that we can have on the shore right so sweeter this experience is sweeter this is more sweet this is uh, more enjoyable right also in the sea we'll see that uh, waves are like colliding uh, uh, amongst themselves and they are uh, producing this white foam and it appears as if the waves are dancing uh, in the sea when we are like deep inside the sea we will see foam around us the foam is uh, produced by the waves which collide uh, amongst them uh, amongst themselves and the, 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 so we uh, kind of see as if the waves are dancing so again personification in this poem uh, so many times personification has been done uh, or used i should say it has been used uh, uh, personification is a literary device we will read about uh, all the literary devices uh, uh, in some other class let's finish up this uh, poem let's wrap up this poem so students uh, the white foam is produced by dancing sea waves see sea, sea waves are not dancing they are only like moving and they are like colliding and the foam is getting produced but then uh, we can say we can feel as if the waves are dancing and because of that uh, that foam has produced and that foam is the is the sign of happiness that foam is the sign of happiness so see the waves are so happy they are dancing and this foam is the proof that they are happy so this experience of watching the waves dance this experience of sailing in the sea water droplets falling on us this is more enjoyable than what we can have on the seashore so brothers row row what is row r o w row row is this thing uh, the fishermen row their boat this this motion is called row this, this they have this wooden uh, plank which using which they row their boats so this is called rowing so row brothers row keep uh, like say, uh, rowing and let's keep moving forward and uh, till where do we want to reach we want to reach uh, till the edge of the verge students verge also means edge 
uh, in this poem though they have like uh, mentioned that verge is a piece of grass at the edge of something uh, verge uh, but i don't like agree to it much uh, i feel that uh, the poet is talking about uh, the edge of the edge like uh, see uh, there is this word called horizon horizon what is horizon uh, when you are standing on the seashore and if you look uh, like uh, far away in the sea uh, all you see is that there is water there is no land after the water because seas are so big but you do see that uh, as if the sky has like curved down and it is meeting the meeting the uh, waters right so till the uh, like distance you can see you will see only water but at the end you will see the sky is like meeting the water and this edge this line is known as horizon this line is known as horizon right chit is hindi mein we call it uh, chit is uh, uh, so this horizon now the poet is saying we have to row till the horizon we have to row till the horizon horizon has been considered as the uh, edge of the verge so we have to like go uh, to the uh, verge or the edge of the edge like the last edge the final edge to the to the final edge to the horizon so let's keep it simple we have to row till the horizon we have to row till the horizon uh, where the low sky mates with the sea where the low sky mates with the sea what is mating mating is uh, like uh, meeting you can say meeting also meeting is uh, like when uh, uh, if you talk about uh, like uh, dogs or any other animals when a when a female dog and a male dog meet when they meet uh, and uh, that 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 process is called mating uh, meeting of a female and a male so uh, again uh, this this uh, uh, like meeting of the sky and the sea is the uh, personified and it is mentioned as if two lovers are meeting as if two lovers are meeting they are meeting or mating right so we have to row till there so bachcho again in the last paragraph it says though all the experiences that we get on the shore they are also enjoyable uh, but we should uh, like sail because when we sail and the things that we get are much more enjoyable so students will quickly summarize the poem in like less than 2 3 minutes let's do it okay so in this poem in the first stanza the poet says that oh my brothers oh uh, fishermen wake up the skies have woken up they are praying the morning they are praying the morning light you should also wake up the wind which was uh, blowing very strongly all through the night it is now still so it's a good thing now, now the wind is still we can uh, like uh, wake up and we can get going with our business of sailing in the sea right because the wind is not blowing the storm is not blowing it's all so silent and so still so let's go the wind is uh, uh, wind was uh, like uh, making uh, noise it was crying all through the night like a child which was crying all through the night and now uh, like the uh, like the child normally sleeps during the morning time during the dawn the wind is also sleeping in its mother's arm it is also silent so uh, fishermen let's uh, collect our nets and let's uh, set our boats free and let's go Uh, let's go to uh, catch fishes to sorry to catch fish not fishes uh, students uh, to catch fish uh, fish which is the wealth of the wealth of the sea which is the wealth of the tides which is the wealth of the waves uh, the wealth of the waves we have to catch we have to capture and why do we do, uh, want need to do it we must do it because we are the kings we own it it belongs to us it says that it is not with us but we must get it because it is ours it belongs to us the wealth the fish belongs to us let's go and get it second paragraph bachcho no longer delay students the poet says let's not delay any further let's not make it any any later okay any late let's not delay let's not be late let's start sailing and we will sail in the direction in which the seagulls are flying seagulls the bird they are flying in a certain direction we will sail in the same direction we will follow them they will guide us and why to worry and what to worry about uh, we like uh, are going to be with our family the sea is our mother the clouds are our brothers the waves are our comrades or friends or companions so why to worry we'll be in the family and uh, what if we like uh, stumble and fall down uh, by the time the sun sets and, and by the time we are about to uh, return But what if uh, like the sea uh, god uh, plays bad with us and he brings some strong and he if he makes us fall and drown what then don't worry don't worry the sea god is so, so, uh, ultimate power, uh, like uh, she has got he has got the ultimate power he he is the supreme power in the sea he controls everything there he controls everything he will also control us he will also save us he will also protect us he will uh, hold us close to his heart he will not let us uh, drown don't worry about that in the last paragraph the poet says that 
like everything on the seashore is so much enjoyable like uh, there is shade of the coconut trees there are there are like very few coconut trees in that open space and the, uh, we enjoy the shade of the coconut trees we enjoy the scent of the mango uh, trees the group of mango trees the mango grove the group of mango trees we enjoy the, uh, its scent their scent and we enjoy uh, like uh, the shining particles of sand uh, in the during the full uh, full moon nights during the full moon nights we enjoy the shining sa sand particle uh, particles and also we enjoy the sound of the sea the sound of the sea waves it is also enjoyable it is also also uh, pleasurable but sweeter uh, more ple uh, ple pleasurable more enjoyable is when we sail deep into the sea like brave and courageous kings and warriors and uh, uh, we get this uh, uh, thrilling feeling our hair is blowing and we are like sailing fast and we are doing something dangerous something risky the thrill uh, the excitement that we get out of that it is much better it is much better and we'll go there and the like water will uh, uh, be falling on our bodies every now and then and we'll be like moving ahead like uh, warriors like heroes and uh, uh, there we'll get to see uh, like see um, sea waves uh, like dancing we'll see there that sea waves are colliding amongst themselves and they are producing foam so uh, they it will appear as if they are dancing and they're happy and we'll we'll we see all this we'll experience all this and all this would be so much more enjoyable so much more uh, pleasurable so much more better so much more sweeter so this was the poem uh, students this poem has got actually a hidden message this poem though talks about uh, fishermen but this poem was written during the india's freedom struggle and in this poem the poet is also kind of uh, uh, calling uh, to the citizens of the country to all the indians she is calling upon them she is calling them to join the india's freedom struggle she wants everyone to be part of uh, india's freedom struggle she see, she says that it is very much uh, uh, peaceful and enjoyable at your homes in your towns in your villages but it will be more enjoyable you will get you will be more satisfied you will be more uh, content you will be more content if you be a part of the india freedom struggle so there is a hidden message also in this poem this was our poem students uh, the coromandel fishers i thought the video will be short because it's a poem of only three stanzas but the video has become so long let's finish it up right now okay i'll see you in the next class students take care